When it comes to 3D printing, we all need a little bit of tolerance sometimes. No, I'm not talking about tolerating your printer failing and breaking down and spending those countless hours fixing it. I'm talking about tolerance with your 3D printed designs and how much or how little you can get away with. So in this video on Maker's Muse, we're gonna 3D print the all new Maker's Muse tolerance gauge and put your 3D printer to the test. Let's get started. Okay, but before I dive into it, what are tolerances and why should you care? Well, nothing is exact in life. You can try to design something to be exactly 10 millimeters long, but it's never gonna be perfectly 10 millimeters. So when you're printing a single object, that's okay. No one really cares. But when objects interact with each other, that's when things get a little bit more interesting. Take these two parts here. These parts are from my 3D printed hinge video I did a few months ago and they're designed with a certain amount of gap between each component. And that's because if I design them to be exactly the same size across on the middle part here and the internal part here, when I went to assemble them, they wouldn't fit together. That's because your 3D printer is very unlikely to make a part exactly the right size. It's going to make them either bigger or smaller. And because these are both on the same 3D printer, if this part became bigger, it's not gonna fit. And if this part became smaller, this part would also become smaller. Therefore, it's not going to work. So we need something called tolerance, but how do you work out how much tolerance you should design into your models before you 3D print them? Well, for a very long time, I just guessed. So I would design a 0.3 millimeter gap in my models, but not all 3D printers are created equally. I have a lot at my disposal now. I wanna get a gauge printed that can tell me exactly how much gap I can have between parts. So when I design, I know exactly what I'm working with. So the tolerance gauge was born. This is version one that was 3D printed on my Prutri 3 Mark II, and it has gaps from 0.05 millimeters all the way through to 0.5 millimeters. So interestingly, sliced on slicer, the Prutri edition, the 0.05 just didn't even acknowledge it in the slicer, it didn't even exist, which is fair enough because there's no way it would actually work on FDM, challenge, uh, challenge issued. But basically 0.1 is also welded, but 0.2 millimeters surprisingly is free on this model. This is printed in Polyalchemy Elixir Gold PLA. So that was actually really surprising because I thought 0.2, there's no way that would work. So 0.2 all the way out to 0.5 does work and you can actually get a really good appreciation of how different tolerances affect two models that interact together. So you could affect your slicer and alter tolerances. For example, you can change your XY compensation, which is a suggestion that Chuck did mention when I posted a, a teaser picture up on Twitter. You definitely could do that. But the purpose of this model is to show you what you need to have to make your print work rather than a torture test that you want that model to, to function, but you're not gonna gain any, any, I guess, useful data out of it. So, Prusa i3 worked really well. What about the Flux Delta Plus? Well, you would have seen in the review that it didn't do a very good job. It actually only got the 0.5 and with freeing and a bit of prying, the 0.4 to work, which is surprising because, you know, it's a pretty decent machine. It's a fairly decent price, about the same as the Prusa i3 Mark II. So I would have expected a little bit better, but the manufacturer did say the filament might not be very good. So again, we're not just testing the printer's tolerance, we're also testing your settings tolerances and your material ability to hold tolerance. This is one I printed on the JG Aurora. So the JG Aurora is kind of an in-between with the Prusa i3 Mark II and the result of the Flux Delta Plus. The JG Aurora got 0.3 and up to work, whereas the, the Prusa i3 Mark II got 0.2 millimeter tolerances to work. So you can see already how this tolerance gauge is useful in determining what your 3D printer is capable of. But I'll be honest, this design was pretty clunky. It took a very long time to print and it had a fair amount of material use in it. And it wasn't really, as a final object, that satisfying. The little tabs to turn things would break off. And I wanted a version two. So that's what this is. This is the tolerance test version two that I've designed in Fusion 360. Now it was a bit of a hack to get it to work in Fusion 360. What I did is I designed one object, which is like one like this. And then I did a copy paste. But instead of doing a standard paste or a pattern, I did paste new. And that was important because I wanted to change the tolerances between each object and the text on top. And if you do a pattern, when you change one, everything updates. So definitely a bit of a hack and not that great of an approach, but it did work. And it meant I could take one of these designs and turn it into this. So this is printed off the Prusa i3 Mark II. And the new design 
has another step, a 0.15 millimeter gap, which I thought was a good, a good sort of expectation for a really well-tuned FDM. So when you print this, you're gonna have this object and some of these triangles may be welded, so you're gonna need the key. This is the key. It's just got the little triangle indentation, slots into them, like so, and then you can free them up. Why did that break? Well, let me show you. I tried to free up the 0.15 using this key and it broke, but it's interesting looking straight into it, you can see that it's only welded in some areas, which means my end perimeters are probably my limiting factor in terms of getting a high tolerance part. The actual runs are quite, quite accurate, but when the extruder stops and starts, there's a little bit of over extrusion and that's where it's welded in this part, in this case. So I can't free up the 0.15 sadly. And one massive bonus of this new design is it's a lot smaller than the previous one and when it's finished, it makes a fidget spinner. I'm sorry, I had to show it. So this thing actually is quite fun to play with and once it's complete, it gives you a really good, accurate representation of what your 3D printer is capable of when it comes to very small gaps. So it's not gonna show you the whole story. Obviously gaps over the top will be different to your tolerances over the sides of prints. So this does have a 60 degree overhang top and bottom, which gives you a fairly good idea as well as the vertical gap tolerance uh, of the machine. But it's not gonna tell you the whole story, but it's gonna give you a pretty good indication of what your machine is capable of and help you fine tune settings to get the best possible 3D printing quality off your machine. So I issue forth the challenge. This file is available on Gumroad and it's currently free for this week. Then I'm gonna make it a dollar. If you wanna support the channel, you can put any price you like, but it's gonna be free for this week. And I wanna see what you guys can print. I wanna see someone make the elusive 0.15 or maybe the 0.1, or maybe even the 0.05. If you have an object or, or a very high-end SLA, you may very well be able to get the 0.05 working. And no cheating, no changing your XY offsets, because I'll know, I won't know, but yeah, no cheating, There's no, you're not gonna learn anything. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse. Don't forget to tag me your results on Twitter, at Makers Muse. I'd love to see what you can achieve on your 3D printer. If you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse, hit the subscribe button, it helps us out a huge amount. As of right now, I'll currently be in America, so if you're gonna be at the Bay Area Maker Fair, come say hi, I'll be hanging around with all the awesome guys at the Matter Hackers booth. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy printing, guys. Bye. He has placed satellites into water. He has actually...